Pervading personality of Godhead. <coughs> Offer my respectful obeisances unto you. I meditate upon Lord Sri Krishna because he is the absolute truth. And, uh, and the primeval cause of all causes. And the primeval cause of all causes. Of the creation, sustenance, and destruction of the manifested universes. He is directly and indirectly conscious of all manifestations. And he is independent because there is no other cause beyond him. It is he only who first imparted the Vedic knowledge unto the heart of Brahmaji. The original living being. By him, even the great sages and demigods are placed into illusion. As one is bewildered by the illusory representations of water seen in fire or land seen in water. <clears throat> by him, even the great sages, uh, I'm sorry, uh, only because of him do, um, uh, only because of him do the material universes temporarily manifested by the reactions of the three modes of nature appear factual, although they are unreal. I therefore meditate upon him, Lord Sri Krishna, who is eternally existent in the transcendental abode, which is forever free from the illusory representations of the material world. I meditate upon him, for he is the absolute truth. Dharma projita kaitravotra Paramo nirmat saranam satam. Vedyam vastavam atra vastu. Shivadam tapa trayon mulanam. Shimad bhagavate mahamuni krite. Kimva pure ishwaraha. Sadyo hiti avuruti tetra. Kriti bihi sususubis takshanat. Completely rejecting all religious activities which are materially motivated. This Bhagavata Purana propounds the highest truth, which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God realization. What is the need of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Uh, Daniel, is my Bhagavad Gita there? Yeah. Can you bring it here? Nigama Kalpatura Galitam Falam. Nigama Kalpatura Galitam Falam. Excuse me, Dananjaya. Sukumukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Sukumukad Amrita Dravya Samyutam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Pibata Bhagavatam Rasam Alayam. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvibhavu Kaha. Muhur Ahuraska Bhuvibhavu Kaha. O oh, expert and thoughtful man, relish Shimad Bhagavatam. The mature fruit of the desire tree of Vedic literatures. It emanated from the lips of Sri Sukadeva Goswami. Therefore, this fruit has become even more tasteful. Although its nectarian juice was already relishable for all, including liberated souls. 
Shinvatam Svakata Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Hidyantak Stupadrani we do not suhit satam to hear about Krishna from Vedic literatures or to hear from him directly through the Bhagavad Gita is it self-righteous activity and for one who hears about Krishna Lord Krishna who is dwelling within everyone's heart acts as a best wishing friend and purifies the devotee who constantly engages in hearing of him. Nasta praesu bhadresu nityam bhagavata sevaya bhagavati uttama sloke maktir bhaviti naistiki In this way, a devotee naturally develops his dormant transcendental knowledge. As he hears more about Krishna from the Bhagavatam and from the devotees, becomes, he becomes fixed in the devotional service of the Lord. Tadarajas tamo bhavo, kamalo bhaya tayaschaye, chete tayarana vidam, stitvam satve prasiddhati. By development of devotional service, one becomes freed from the modes of passion and ignorance, and thus material loss and avarice are diminished. Evam prasana manaso bhagavat bhakti yogataha bhagavat tattva vigyanam mukta sangha sijayate when these impurities are wiped away, the candidate remains steady in his position of pure of of candidate remains steady in his position of pure goodness. Becomes enlivened by devotional service and understands the science of God perfectly. Bidyate hridaya grantis chidyante sarvasamsaya. Siyante jasikarmani Drista evat manishwari Thus bhakti yoga severs the hard knot of material affection and enables one to come to the stage of a samsayam samagram understanding the supreme absolute truth personality of Godhead. Shimon Bhagavatam, Canto 1, chapter 15, verse number 14. Yabandava kuru baladim anantaparam Eko ratena tatare ham atir yasatvam Patyaritam bahudanam chamaya parisam Tejas, tejas padam mani mayam charitam siro buyaha. Translation by Srila Prabhupada. The military strength of the Kauravas was like an ocean, and they dwelled, and in which there dwelled many invincible existences, and thus it was insurmountable. But because of his friendship, meaning Krishna's friendship, I, seated on the chariot, was able to cross over it. And only by his grace was I able to regain the cows and also collect by force many helmets of the kings which were bedecked with jewels that were sources of all brilliance. Purport by his divine grace, A.C. Bhakti Vedanta Swami Prabhupada. On the Kaurava's side, there were many stalwart commanders like Bhisma, Drona, Kripa, and Karna, and their military strength was as insurmountable as the great ocean. And yet it was due to Lord Krishna's grace that Arjuna alone, sitting on the chariot, could manage to vanquish them one after another 
without difficulty. There were many changes of commanders on the other side, but on the Pandava side, Arjuna alone, on the chariot driven by Lord Krishna, could manage the whole responsibility of the great war. Similarly, when the Pandavas were living at the palace of Virata incognito, the Kauravas picked a quarrel with King Virata and decided to take away his large number of cows. While they were taking away the cows, Arjuna fought with them incognito and was able to regain the cows along with some booty taken by force, the jewels set on the turbans of the royal order. Arjuna remembered all this was possible by the grace of the Lord. Srila Prabhupada ki jay. So here we see that what makes people puffed up is acquiring assets and having uh, mundane knowledge or even some spiritual knowledge and also having prestige and power and they get puffed up. But in the case of a devotee, the first and foremost no, uh, principle of knowledge is amanitvam, humility. And what does humility mean? One understands that Krishna is the Supreme Personality of Godhead. No one is equal to him or greater than him. And from him come all things, all powers, all uh, qualities and abilities. And therefore, one remains humble even though they may have, like Arjuna, incredible power to defeat entire armies. Now, it says here the Kauravas were insurmountable. They had such powerful uh, commanders. In fact, uh, Bhisma Pitamaha is not an ordinary human being. He's, 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 he's born of uh, the devas uh, because his mother is uh, Ganga Mata. So therefore, it's imp it was impossible to defeat him. But yet, because Krishna was on Arjuna's side, he was able to defeat uh, Bhisma Pita Maha, Dronacharya, later on Karna, and so forth. So it's impossible to do that, but due to the Lord's kindness and mercy and help, Arjuna was able to do that. And he realized that whatever powers he had were coming from the Lord, it was the Lord's mercy, and he never forgot it. And so here he's remembering it uh, again. And then he also defeated the Kauravas <clears throat> while he was incognito in the kingdom of uh, King Virat. And when they, when they uh, attacked the king, they wanted to take away his wealth. What was his wealth? Cows. Now someone say, might say, well, no, wealth means you know you have 401k and you you own uh, uh, stocks and you have a big company and you're making so much money and so many people working for you. Uh, that's not real wealth. That can change at any time. But if you have cows and grow grains, then you have real wealth. And that can also be taken away at any time. But if you're a devotee and you're always uh, praising the Lord and worshiping the Lord, not for material benefit, but because you genuinely have love for uh, Lord, uh, Lord Krishna, Radha and Krishna, then the Lord protects you. And uh, real wealth, in one sense, is described as living at home with no debts and having a peaceful mind, and having plenty of time to practice Krishna consciousness. If you live at home with a lot of debts, you're always worried about paying off your, <laughs> your debts. And uh, so, therefore, it doesn't matter how big your home is. What matters is not having debts. Uh, so, therefore, people live restricted lives in spiritual life and try and keep keep their lives as simple as possible, 
so that they have plenty of time for chanting, dancing, and feasting, and glorifying the Lord and engaging in devotional service. So, therefore, Arjuna, uh, it says here, due to Lord Krishna's grace, that Arjuna alone, sitting on a chariot, could manage to vanquish them, meaning Bhisma, Drona, Kripa, Karna, and the military strength, ins insurmountable military strength of the Kauravas. He was able to do it without difficulty. And on the side of Kauravas, they changed their commanders many times. But Arjuna uh, was alone on the chariot driven by Krishna, and he was able to manage the whole responsibility of the great war. So these are practical examples that we should meditate on because this is the truth. And we shouldn't be uh, dazzled by all the pompous uh, bragging of the materialists, the scientists, the philosophers, the big businessmen, the politicians. They are what you call paper dragons. A dragon is a dangerous thing, but a paper dragon is not dangerous. It just looks dangerous, but you can just blow it over with a little bit of uh, breath, you see. So, therefore, uh, the devotees understand the precariousness of these big people in the material world. And the whole process of Krishna consciousness is to gradually elevate people from the mode of ignorance to the mode of passion and to the mode of uh, goodness and then transcendental goodness. And this is called the Vedic process. And it's very, very important to understand what the Vedic process is. So I'm going to ex give an explanation of it. It says, the Vedic process is to promote the conditioned soul gradually from the mode of ignorance to the mode of passion and from the mode of passion to the mode of goodness. In the mode of goodness, there is sufficient light for understanding things as they are. For example, from earth a tree grows, and from the wood of the tree, fire is ignited. In that igniting process, we first of all find smoke, and the next stage is heat, and then fire. When there is actually fire, we can utilize it for various purposes. Therefore, fire is the ultimate goal. Similarly, in the gross material stages of life, the quality of ignorance is very prominent. This dissipation of this ignorance takes place in the gradual process of civilization from the barbarian stage to the civilized life. And when one comes to the form of civilized life, he is said to be in the mode of passion. In the barbarian stage or in the mode of ignorance, the senses are gratified in a very crude way. Whereas in the mode of passion or in civilized life, the senses are gratified in a polished manner. But when one is promoted to the mode of goodness, one can understand that the senses and the mind are engaged in material activities only due to being covered by perverted consciousness. When this perverted consciousness is gradually transformed into Krishna consciousness, then a path of liberation is open. So it is not that one is unable to approach the absolute truth by the senses and the mind. The conclusion is rather that the senses, mind, and intelligence in the gross stage of contamination cannot appreciate the nature of the absolute truth. But when purified, the senses, mind, and intelligence can understand what the absolute truth is. The purifying process is called devotional service or Krishna consciousness. So this is called the Vedic process. This is what Prabhupada has instituted in the ISKCON or International Society for Krishna Consciousness, this process of uh, raising us from the mode of ignorance to passion to goodness, and then from goodness to transcendental goodness when we actually become genuine devotees. So Prabhupada continues, in the Bhagavad Gita it is clearly stated that the purpose of Vedic knowledge is to understand Krishna, and Krishna is understood by devotional service, beginning with the process of surrender. As so. Surrender is when you, uh, officially, is when you get initiated. 
Uh, it's the formal process of surrender when you have to, when you promise to follow the four regulative principles and, const and chant a minimum 16 good rounds a day and uh, continually attend the program morning and evening and get uh, inspi inspired to always uh, be vigilant in your behavior and your following of the of the regulated life of Krishna consciousness. So uh, here, this is only possible by devotional service. By this process only can one enter into the kingdom of God without any doubt. So that's basically by manmana bhava mad bhaktu mad yajimam namaskuru, by always thinking of Krishna, becoming devotee of Krishna, worshiping Krishna, and offering all one's homage and respect to Krishna. One who is enlightened in the mode of goodness by the process of devotional service is freed from the modes of ignorance and passion. In answering King Pariksit's question, Sugadeva Goswami used the word atmane, which indicates the stage of brahminical qualification in which one is allowed to study the Vedic literatures known as the Upanishads. The Upanishads describe in different ways the transcendental qualities of the Supreme Lord. So this is what we're doing. We study Bhagavad Gita, which is the Gita Upanishad, and then we study Srimad Bhagavatam, which is the Amala Purana, the greatest of all the Puranas. And the absolute truth, the Supreme Lord, is called Nirguna. That does not mean he has no qualities. It is only because he has qualities that the conditioned living entities can have qualities. The purpose of studying the Upanishads is, is to understand the transcendental qualities of the absolute truth as opposed to the material qualities of ignorance, passion, and goodness. So mundane education is studying the material qualities of ignorance, passion, <laughs> and goodness. And uh, Krishna consciousness is studying the transcendental qualities of Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead. That is the way of Vedic understanding. Great sages like the four Kumaras, headed by Sanaka, Sanaka, followed these principles of Vedic knowledge and came gradually from the impersonal understanding to the platform of personal worship of the Supreme Lord. It is therefore recommended that we must follow the great personalities. Sugadev Goswami is also one of the great personalities and his answer to the inquiry of Maharaj Pariksit is authorized. One who follows in the footsteps of such great personalities surely walks very easily on the path of liberation and ultimately goes back home, back to Godhead. That is the way of perfecting this human form of life. So here we see the problem. The problem is material education, becoming stupid by studying that, uh, what you would call uh, gramya kata. It's, it's all nonsense. Uh, nonsense concepts and and they come up with these concepts generation after generation to mislead people so that they become exploited commodities in society they're exploited by false promises of the politicians and therefore they don't really pay attention to spiritual life they just keep getting inspired to have more and more sense gratification and sense gratification on a level of ignorance, sense gratification on a level of passion, and sense gratification on a level of goodness. But it's always sense gratification. So this is an explanation of the Vedic process to raise a person up from these lower modes to the mode of goodness where they can begin to understand about Krishna and then from the mode of goodness to the transcendental mode of pure goodness where they actually understand scientifically Krishna and uh, become determined never to leave devotional service or Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai, are there any questions? Yes. But yeah. The false ego is, is the uh, uh, is thinking I am this body. So, 
when you're studying, you know, uh, history and then science and then archaeology and you're studying social sciences, all these things, it's all based on the body. And it makes you more and more convinced I am this body and the body is not who you really are. So that's the, false, the development of the false ego. Yeah. I am American or I am Indian or I am Canadian or I am this or that. It's all false ego. And uh, because of that, uh, the material concept becomes very fixed and you're ready to die for it. Yeah. And then the politicians, they make it even worse because they they emphasize all these material identities, right? and therefore, all anything based on the body is is false. Yeah. Any other questions? All glories to Sila Prabhupada Ki Jai.